with Rand trading back around 736. And of course, yesterday we had the currency going all the way up to 7 Rand 43. Was it reacting to local factors, international factors? What drove it so weak? Morning, Stephen. Uh, yes, I, I think the RAND's uh, rapid depreciation yesterday was driven by a combination of factors. Um, but chief amongst those would be concerns that South Africa's budget deficit is not going to narrow quite as much as expected in light of government's revised public uh, servants' wage offer. Uh, they've offered an increased 7.5% and an increase in the housing allowance. And there have been concerns as well as comments by senior government officials that this is going to put significant strain on government finances. And of course, just with that small increase, it's adding another 7 billion rand to the, the wage bill, which stands at 297 billion. Do you think there's a, really, uh, a very real risk that we could have our credit ratings uh, put onto negative or even downgraded by ratings agencies due to this? Well, Stephen, the, the budget deficit is one of those things that credit uh, agencies do look at. And they have been warnings recently that a number of South Africa's fundamentals are starting to look weak. Um, but I think from comments that rating agencies have made, they're most likely going to hold out for the medium-term budget expenditure speech in October before making any changes to the current rating. We did have some positive news yesterday. That was the trade surplus uh, coming in at 2 billion rand from June's 6.5 billion rand, or sorry, 5.6 billion rand. And of course, much bigger than expected. Do you think we're still seeing the overhang here, though, from the strikes earlier this year? Yes, absolutely, Stephen. We're waiting for the effect of strike activity to dissipate from the trade figures, and we continue to anticipate deficits going forward. Private sector credit extension numbers that yesterday up by 2%, so slightly better than expected. Does that uh, change your view on the interest rate uh, decision that's likely to be made next week? No, it doesn't, Stephen. I mean, as you say, the data did come out ahead of expectations, but is still weak. Uh, I think highlights uh, ongoing moderation of economic activity. So as far as we're concerned, we're, we're standing by our expectation of a 50 basis point cut next week. And it seems like a growing number of economists and even business organizations are joining the call for a cut in interest rates next week. Uh, what's the market telling you at this stage? Uh, do you think we could have a second cut if we do have a cut next week? Well, Stephen, we're not uh, expecting another cut in November, but certainly market, the market seems to have priced in a cut next week. Um, and I suppose we'll have to wait and evaluate the data that comes out beyond that um, to make a decision on November. But as it stands, we're not expecting a rate cut beyond uh, next week. Uh, Chinese PMI this morning, slightly better than expected, not a whole lot better. Of course, we're expecting PMI out in South Africa as well. What's your expectations on that front? Stephen, I see that market consensus expects the PMI to have improved modestly and be back above the 50, uh, the key 50 level. But we still think that the risks to this are massively stacked in favor of a, of a disappointment in the data. Uh, we know that the RAND was strong, and we know that global economic activity is still weak. Uh, so it doesn't, there doesn't seem to be a whole lot in favor of, of, a, of an improvement in the PMI. And the round in the meantime, would you expect to continue trading at these slightly weaker levels? Uh, yes, Stephen. We anticipate that there could be further round weakness on the cards, especially if today's data disappoints.